Sora 2, what is it and why is OpenAI launching it as a separate standalone social media app? I'm going to break down the entire strategy and why OpenAI's specific product choices tell you about where the company is going. Let's get into it. First, it has taken them a long time to get video and images right. They did not release this back when they did the special splashy Sora 1 launch that had a very nice page showing you potential Sora videos and then much more mixed results a few months later when Sora 1 actually released. They feel better about this product. It's got longer video images. I think it's up to 16 seconds now. They're figuring out some of the sound pieces. And critically, they've put clearly a ton of thought into what kind of social network they want this to be. And yes, let's just say it out loud, it is a social network. ChatGPT is launching a social network as a standalone app. This is a direct shot across the bow at Meta and Zuck, and they mean it. They intend to go after the social network phenomenon for multiple reasons, which I'm gonna get into. But first, let's talk through the product itself. This product is intended to be old style Facebook, old style Instagram. It is about you and your friends. And that is what they are aiming for. And the reason why is pretty simple. They are very, very sensitive to the accusation that AI is going to produce slop on the internet. They don't want to have their brand associated with the idea of AI slop. They have seen Meta's terrible PR experience with AI girlfriends and boyfriends, with AI chat sort of assistance, with AI produced, I think there was a nonprofit scam where AI was like bragging about donating and helping others last year. They've seen all of those stories. They've seen this broad and pervasive impression that people have that AI is wrecking social media. And they want two things out of that. One, they want to make sure that they are perceived as the good guys. And two, they want to make sure that they can show a path for AI being used responsibly. And so as much as I think they're excited about Sora launching, I'm sure the team worked really hard on it. From a strategic perspective, even if Sora doesn't succeed, but it shows a way toward a more constructive use of AI, that is still a base hit from their perspective. That is still a win because they can show that AI can be part of the solution, which ChatGPT and OpenAI desperately need right now. So that is why they have centered this app around you and your friends. That is why the viral feature of this app is you insert yourself as a cameo into the AI video and show your friends and cast yourselves back and forth. It is designed for fun, encouraging, positive interaction between friends that cannot help but be powered by AI. You can't put yourself into videos and send them back and forth and have fun unless you're using AI. And so it is also inherently a set of training wheels for people who are going to be using AI to be creative in new ways. In some ways, I think the network that we don't talk about that should be most worried is Snap because Snap is designed for those kinds of ephemeral interactions back and forth between friends. And it's interesting to see that that is the direction that OpenAI has chosen to go rather than more of the content network like TikTok. We will see, it is early days yet. I remember when Threads released and then the long fallout from Threads. This is day one for Sora 2. We will see where it ends up. Before we go farther though, we've talked about sort of their core friend-oriented product strategy. I wanna talk about the larger product strategy. Why is OpenAI getting into the social network business at all? It is not just because they need AI to be perceived positively. It is also because they have a billion people and they are a consumer application and one of the inevitable forms of business on the internet for consumer applications is attention to ads. I've been talking a lot about OpenAI monetizing ads, and we have seen them do three things that argue for ads, maybe four, in the last week. One is starting to hire a head of monetization and ads. That's pretty transparent. Two is launching Pulse for pro users where they actually show you cards. You can see sponsored cards so easily there, guys. It's like falling over. And then three, launching Sora 2. Again, a super easy platform for ads. 
Now, the fourth thing, if you sort of want to get into the full purchase funnel, they are working with Etsy and Shopify on checkout within ChatGPT. And so now they would own the whole funnel, right? Well, all of this helps to answer the question for all of us about how they are thinking about ads and how they are thinking about maintaining the perceived integrity of the system when you get answers from ChatGPT. Because one of the persistent concerns I've seen in my DMs that I've also had is, how do you handle the integrity of the system if someone can buy an answer on ChatGPT? That feels like it will rot the product experience from within, and it feels like something that ChatGPT is gonna be self-aware enough to avoid. This may be how. They may be choosing to launch new surfaces off their existing install base in order to provide themselves ad paint spots that don't touch the core chat GPT experience. Like you get an ad in Pulse, you get an ad on Sora 2, they didn't touch chat GPT, you still think of chat GPT as trustworthy, right? I'm not saying that's the whole solution. They may indeed get to a point where they start to put ads in chat GPT itself. My bet is they're gonna use some of these other surfaces initially because they're much, much lower stakes, they're newer. But we come back around to the imperative of monetization. We come back around to the idea that this is a billion user company or soon will be. This would be the only billion user company that is not an ad network if it didn't do ads. This would be the only billion user network that is not a social network if it didn't do social. It is sort of like centers of gravity on the internet. When you get to a certain scale, you head to ads and you head to a social network. It's just what you do. It's how you make money. You make money off relationships and attention. And so that is why when people started to write me and say, why on earth is ChatGPT doing this? I thought they were a chat product. I think we need to rethink what they are. They are not a chat product per se. They're an intelligence company that is in the business of providing delightful experiences at scale driven by intelligence. So think that one through and suddenly the social network makes sense, Pulse makes sense, checkout makes sense. These all make sense. Now, is there an enterprise arm? Is there an R&D arm? Absolutely. And those help with profitability and the P&L of the business. But the beating heart of the company is the billion user base. If you don't keep that healthy, you're not a big brand. And if you're not a big brand, you are indirectly damaging your enterprise and your R&D plays as well. Part of why enterprise has chat GPT on the table is because everyone has heard of it. So you need that popular support even on the B2B side. So I think that's some of what is going on strategically here. That's why I wasn't surprised when Sora 2 launched. I think they also launched preemptively before the holidays. They wanted the attention. They wanted the build up to Black Friday, Cyber Monday. They wanted the Q4. They wanted the tie into monetization. I don't know what that means for ads this fourth quarter, but I think they at least want the telemetry. They want the metrics of how people interact with it and they want to start to build against it. They also want to steal a march on Google, Snap, and Meta because all of those will now be looking at how they can start to get into the action on the social side too. Meta is actively building that way and has been roundly criticized by most people. I described that earlier in this video. Google hasn't launched anything in the social network space for a very long time, and they are trying to maintain attention by leaning into Nano Banana everywhere you can look. Like they have ads up everywhere. They have ads on TV. They have ads on TikTok. They have ads on other channels across the internet. They're leaning in with Lovable on this build week. They want you thinking of Nano Banana a lot right now because they don't want you distracted by what Sora can do, right? Like for them, this is a little bit of a defensive play where they need to lean in on the cool thing they have so you don't get distracted by the cool thing OpenAI has. And we'll see what Snap does. My perception is this is a direct threat to Snap, but it's only a direct threat to Snap if people start to adopt it and use it and find it delightful. And I think that is always the question. That is the magic that comes with social networks you get a particular ecosystem and culture very, very rapidly. And that is why they're making it invite only is because they want to seed the ecosystem with the kind of creators that will help them to build a culture that will be attractive to build a long-term following and long-term positive experience for people. I suspect they especially want to develop a reputation as a safe and positive place versus 
some of the brand reputation stuff you see with other major social networks. So we will see. It is day one for Sora 2, but that is why OpenAI is thinking about that. This is the intelligence company and the intelligence company that has a billion users. They are figuring out how to leverage intelligence every way they can to provide delightful experiences for those users. And that's a very different strategic position from every other sort of model maker in the space. What do you think? What are they up to with Sora 2? Have you tried Sora 2? Do you have invite codes for Sora 2? I'm sure that people in the, in the comments will be very excited about that. Cheers.